other points in my career, and I would say at the peak of my career, I used to do what I call trend surf. I would figure out what is trending both in the media and on social media. Why are you embarrassing me? Look, everybody. No! <laughs> She's going around the house showing everyone this photo. I don't even remember taking it. <laughs> Why do you love embarrassing me so much? <laughs> the kids and I always text each other funny photos back and forth. They text them from their iPad to my phone, but they're only supposed to be for our eyes only. It's a slow start to the day today. I woke up feeling sick. I've got Zoe's cold. Zoe woke up with a runny nose again and not feeling very well. I was in two minds about allowing her to go out trick-or-treating while she was sick. And in the end, I decided to let her do it. But in the grand scheme of things, I think she created some lifetime memories from it. She'll remember Halloween getting to hang out with her friends on Halloween and won't remember being sick for a couple of days. So I think I made the right decision, but uh, I, I still need to take care of her and get her feeling better. So today I'm about to go and get her some more kids Panadol and some other things to cheer her up. And I'm gonna take it easy today because I got a big week. I've got a big night tonight. I'm going to speak at an event. I'll tell you guys about that later. And then I got something really exciting that I'm doing later in the week. I'm traveling again. I got her medicine, but I'm also gonna get her the medicine she'll really like. I think when you're sick, you definitely have to have icy poles. Also, I'll get her some lemonade as well. I think it's all in the head, but when I was a kid, I always used to get lemonade when I was sick, and so I always give the kids lemonade when they're sick. Uh, I mean, look, it's important to stay hydrated. I give them water when they're sick as well, but um, yeah, I think it's nice to have a little bit of a treat when you're sick too. Uh, where is the Sprite? Seeing sugar-free Sprite. No one likes sugar-free Sprite. Ah, uh, we've got regular Sprite here. I don't know if it was the same in other countries, but in Australia, McDonald's got rid of regular Sprite and replaced it with the sugar-free one for, I don't know how long, it seemed like a while, but uh, they've gone back to the regular Sprite. They did it so that there was a healthy option, but I guess it didn't go down well. And yeah, I find sugar-free Sprite tastes terrible. Ava didn't mind it, but Zoe was on team, didn't like it. Made a bunch of changes around that time. They also changed up their Happy Meals as well. So you didn't get plastic Happy Meal toys anymore. You either got a book or a toy made out of cardboard that you had to make yourself, which for my kids at least, took all the excitement out of Happy Meals. And a lot of the time they just say that they didn't want a toy. Now they've gone back to regular toys again and the kids actually want the toys. So yeah, I think they tried something new, it didn't work and they've changed it up. I don't know if that was just an Australian thing or if it was a worldwide thing. Good job, Zozo. Hey. Is it just my kids or are all kids like this? When they're sick, the only way you can tell that they're sick is from the sound of the voice and the snot coming out their nose because the <laughs> energy factor just never goes. <laughs> Me, when I'm sick, I just want to do nothing, which is how I feel right now. Whereas you, when you're sick. <laughs> It's the same kid. So, and then you wait. And then. You make that look so easy. Because it is. Alright, let me try. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Okay, I'll hold the camera, I'll record. Alright, shoes <laughs> off. Now let's see Dad do the thing that we just did. 
try to. <laughs> That's better than I expected. Whoa! That's better than Whoa! I expected. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> he can do it! That's at least better than I expected. Your face is red. I'm still alive. Yeah, Your I face is you, red. I put you were going to go like this. I put you were going to go. I put you were going to go like this. I put you were going to go like. But I'm surprised you actually did a voice. This bird has been living on the roof trying to work up the courage to fly for the first time for the last couple of days. So cute, yeah. Nah, I noticed that a couple of days ago. I forgot. There must be a nest on the roof. There's mama bird just getting a break in the tree. The baby birds are calling out to her. I need some rest. Give me a break. Chilling in the uncomfortable tree just to get some peace and quiet. And they're all calling out. Like, mom, mom, mom. I'm in the city now. I'm speaking at an event tonight with E3 Motivation, which is ran by a friend of mine, Joe, a man who I've got a lot of respect for. So I'm quite honored and humbled that I've been invited to speak at this event and I'm going to be sharing some of my experiences as a YouTuber and hopefully being able to give some advice to other creatives because I know there's going to be a lot of amazing creatives in the room as well so I know I'm going to learn a lot too so yeah I'm, I'm really excited and I'll take you guys along with me Any creatives like that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, these crazy Disney ideas going on but not taking a shot Take a risk. This week, you're gonna be in the moment and you're gonna take a risk with your crazy self. You're gonna put your card on the table and you watch what's gonna happen. You're gonna turn a moment into momentum. You're gonna become an unstoppable movement. My genuine creativity it was taking my personality out of it and then I was trying to keep up the algorithms or what was working for other people and so at the moment I'm just freestyling but at other points in my career and I would say at the peak of my career I used to do what I call trend surf I would figure out what is trending both in the media and on social media whether it be challenges that are trending because jumping on challenges and things like that are really easy ways to grow because people are already searching for that sort of stuff. So it's a great way to engage with an audience who may not otherwise see you and then hope that they'll go and check out your other stuff. I would uh, look at people in my same niche and I would literally go, like, I would spend sometimes like a whole day going through all their thumbnails, all their videos, seeing what was good and what was bad about the thumbnails. Why did a video perform well? Why did it perform bad? What was good about the title? What was bad about the title? And how I could implement that into my own video strategy. And from doing stuff like that, it really helped me grow. But the other way that I really grew was from genuinely caring about the community of people who watched the videos. And I think that's something that makes a huge difference when you care about the people who are impacted by what you're doing. It creates a community versus viewership. What a night, man. It was amazing. Every full house. Yeah, every seat was full. Yeah. So many uh, amazing people speaking. Yeah. I was so inspired by everything that you said, by Thank everything you. Toby said. Yes. And uh, I just want- Likewise from you. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. I, we inspired the room. I felt humble being here, yeah. being a part of it. And uh, I just wanted to let people know where they can check you out That's for it. your coaching. Uh, yeah, jump online, e3motivation.com and just have a look at the programs there and the framework. It's gonna help you. Take your vision from zero to 100, let's go. I'll leave a link in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. See ya.